Hey again, uh, finally getting around to do the uh, SR-71 build. This will be, uh, I'm not sure if it will be a one part or two part. We'll see how far we get on this uh, first part. Uh, a couple of you would ask that I show a little bit more detail on what I'm doing, so I'm going to attempt that. I don't have a cameraman that's up on a uh, tripod right now, so um, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'll try to do a few close-ups and stuff. So uh, looking over the instructions here, there's really not much to them. Again, a bunch of pictures. And that's about it. A uh, very sparse description of what uh, what they want you to do, but it doesn't look uh, too hard. It looks fairly straightforward. So let me turn this over. It looks like the first step that they want you to do is to uh, install the servos and the control horns. So these, like I said before, these covers are latched on with magnetic latches. So I'm going to take those off, set them aside there, where I'm not going to squish them, hopefully. And I've got some uh, used servos out of uh, another plane that I had, and we're going to put those. Take a look and see how they got these oriented. Um, yeah, it really doesn't show. Okay, so I guess it does shows that. With, so this one's got to go over on this side like this. So looks like the the wire comes off the front side that way it can fit right down into that notch and uh, one thing I want to note and mention about this kit even though it's a kit it's fairly complete it even comes with uh, the Y harnesses and the extension cables for the servos that you need so that's really nice so I'm gonna put these in I'm not gonna hook the push rods up right now even though it shows doing that I'm gonna wait on that uh, but I'm gonna put these in and then the next step is going to be putting the, um, it doesn't show it again, it's kind of assumed, I guess. Uh, you got to put the control horn in on each of these. These are uh, uh, the ailerons, aileron elevator combinations, elevons is what they would be called. Um, and so I'll put those in, and I'm going to put these in, I'm going to put the, uh, uh, the extensions on here. And then we'll move on to the next uh the next step, which uh, simply gluing on these uh, front cones that go on these here, and then uh, the body of the fuselage gets glued on. And I'm going to be very sparse on the glue there on this uh, because I may need to get back into into here at some point. So I'm just going to kind of tack it on in a few places, and hopefully it'll be enough to hold and won't blow off. But it, uh, it you know be able to cut into it if I need to at some point. So. I'm going to go ahead and put these servos in. And what I'm going to do with these servos, some people use uh, double stick tape and uh, also uh, epoxy. Um, this is a really this is an EPS foam, so epoxy bonds to this really well. So I'm going to use just a little bit of epoxy, mix it up, and put it in there. Uh, I'm using the two tube type epoxy today. Um, I also buy it in bottles that you self mix. Uh, I just happened to run out of that, so I've been using this for a while here until I can get some new bottles of it. So this stuff is the same stuff as far as I can tell. It works just as good. This is a five-minute epoxy. I almost use uh, strictly five-minute epoxy just because it dries quicker. The bond seems to be just as strong as the, the uh, eight-hour stuff. So, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll uh, we'll take a look at it from there. Oh, one thing I want to mention. Uh, watch this video all the way through to the end. I got something funny to show you at the end got here. The servos all glued in and uh, hooked up the extensions. I'm going to put some tape around these uh, connectors here. Uh, they basically just snap together. They feel a little bit loose, so I'm going to come back and uh, put some tape around those. Just a little bit of black tape will be sufficient on those just to hold them together from any vibrations and stuff. That's the last thing you want happening is uh, one of these coming loose during flight and one of your ailerons not working, spiral, spiral right into the ground. So um, I'm really not liking these instructions one bit. Uh, they kind of skip around here. They show putting in the servos and hooking up the, uh, the servo linkages, push rods, and then uh, putting the little uh, nose cones on, uh, on the uh, air intake. Um, they call it uh, glue the air intake unit and propeller upper cover together. So. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Um, and then they show you coming back and doing the um, install of the EDF unit. And um, and then the cover. So they're actually telling you to glue this cover on before you get the EDF unit in. 
and that's not going to leave you a room for the wires for your ESCs and stuff. So, um, sorry, I'm not looking at you here. I was looking down at the instructions. Um, so I, I really don't like these. I'm going to kind of modify these things as I go. So I'm going to go. I'm going to put the EDF units. This kit does come with the EDF units. Uh, it doesn't come with motors, uh, but I bought um, Exceed motors. Uh, from hobbyparts.com and exceed 30 amp ESCs. I hope that the 30 amps will be enough. I think they will. Um, I believe it recommends 40 amp ESCs, but I, I figured 30 amps should be okay with a 64 millimeter, and they're a 4200 uh, RPM, 4200 kilovolt motor each. So we'll, we'll see. I, I hope that I'm not going to be pushing the limits on that. There are 40C bursts, so. If I have to go uh, full throttle to get off the ground and it pushes the 40C, we should be okay on those. So I realized after I ordered them, I may have went a little bit lightweight on those. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting it together. And uh, uh, one other note, the battery that I got for this is a 3,000 milliamp 3-cell three pack. And it's actually too big to fit into the uh, to the space for the battery. So I'm going to have to modify that. I think uh, for the first flight, I'll go with a 2,000 milliamp, which will fit. And then uh, I'll try to modify it for the 3,000 milliamp and check the uh, center of gravity and make sure that it still falls within the reference for the center of gravity. Um, it gives a plus, or a plus or minus 5 millimeters, so that's a pretty good uh, span for center of gravity there. So um, let me get the EDF units, and I'll, we'll take a look at those, and we'll mount the motors up in those and drop them in, and then hook up the ESCs. Okay, so here's the duct and fan unit. It's a uh, six-bladed imp impeller. Looks pretty standard, pretty much like your GWS style that I've seen before, 64 millimeter. Uh, it comes with um, a couple of different size prop adapters. So if you've got a, a shaft that's, uh, I believe these are a three and a 3.2 millimeter shaft adapters. So uh, I'm not sure. I believe this is a three millimeter shaft on this motor. Uh, I'll pull up a larger image here so that you can see this motor a little bit better. And uh, so we're going to put this on here. Basically the motor, if you've never done this before, it's pretty easy. The motor goes right in here, like this, and um, as you can see that's a little bit big, a little bit sloppy, so they what they include is they include a little shroud here to take up that uh, extra gap. So the it slides over the motor just like that, so, and then it slides down here, you can actually probably put it in here first, would be better then drop the motor in. So that takes up the gap and then there's just screw holes here that you put the uh, put the screws in, the mounting screws and then you put the uh, prop adapter on that. There's a hole here that lines up and you use a uh, Allen head screwdriver to uh, tighten that up on there and then this slips right onto the prop adapter and there's a screw that goes in excuse me, fumble fingers here today um, screw that goes in in that to hold it into place like that. So let me assemble this. And I'll be right back and show you a finished product. Let me show you here a little bit a uh, little bit closer so you can see these a little bit better. I'll be back in just a minute and have this all assembled. Okay, so there's the finished uh, completed motor setup. Uh, there's a little bit more gap in between here than I would like to see. Uh, that does reduce the thrust a little bit. Uh, you want that as tight as you can get it without rubbing, but um, that's the way it is. So, Also another thing to notice here is I offset this 90 degrees so that the hole is on top and the wires come out at 90 degrees to that. So that uh, when it's in the plane, if I need to type, tighten up that prop adapter or whatever, I can get at it. I can loosen up this probably get the Allen head wrench down in here and loosen that up enough that I can get to that uh, that prop adapter. Uh, there actually may be, yes there is actually, a, a notch. It should line up properly. A notch right there um, on the, the, uh, the impeller itself. So I should be able to, if I need to um, tighten up the prop adapter, thread the, um, the Allen wrench right down through and tighten that up right from there so it's nice to have this up on top. Uh, back in years gone past, I had not even given it a thought, put the kit together and put that over on the bottom or on the side, and it just caused all kinds of problems. So the next step we're going to do 
And I'm just going to show it briefly here. Is, uh, I've got the uh, Exceed 30 amp programmable. Um, let's see, it's Exceed RC Proton 30 amp speed controller. So um, I was looking at this, and the wires, battery wires, are way too short. Uh, and we're going to have to bind them together anyways, the, the two of them from both sides. So I'm going to clip these off, solder them together, and do one set of leads up to the battery. Uh, so i got to get a hold of some wire. I think I've got some around to do that. But uh, just to show you how this goes in, the, um, the motor drops in just like this. You want just a little bit of glue around there and probably a little bit here. I wouldn't go excessive on this. Don't put it on the top. That's... Uh, that would glue the hatch on that they have there that, uh, that is magnetic. So you don't want to do that. So it would drop right down in here, just like that. Again, make sure the hole's on top, just for easy access. So let me show that to you, just like that. And then the wires go through here. The ESC, these wires are a little bit long, but the ESC would plug in just like this. Just simple banana plugs if you've never done this before, if this is your first kit. I wouldn't recommend this is my first kit, but I want to go through all the steps. I think we're going to have to find some way of routing these wires a little bit better, but that ESC fits in there really nice, fits in that gap. Probably going to have to route these... Uh... I hate to route it behind, because if you route it behind, you, you're cutting into the airflow going out. If you route them ahead, you risk this, uh, the possibility of sucking them into the impeller. So that's neither of those uh, options is good. Um, so I'm not sure what way I'm going to go about this. Uh, once I figure that out, I will let you know. And uh, for the second side, it's basically, um, well, like the shampoo bottle says, repeat as necessary. So uh, wash, rinse, repeat. And this wouldn't be a, a bad option either is just to take these wires down in this little gap here where the ESC is designed to go and actually put the ESC, just uh, use double stick tape on the inside and put it right on the inside. It's not going to throw off your center of gravity that much. Um, basically you're just moving the uh, ESC inward instead of um, forward and back. So I don't think it's going to affect anything. That may be the way that I go is just to use some double stick tape, stick down these wires right in this, this little channel and then uh, double stick uh, the ESC on the inside here. Now it's not going to get as much air, that's the only downside to it. So um, may cut out a couple of small holes so that it gets a little bit better airflow through there. Okay, so that's going to conclude uh, part one. Um, I'm losing my light here for the video and uh, I'm going to do some soldering and stuff and be looking for part two probably next week sometime. So uh, until then, I'll, I'll probably have a couple of uh, other videos coming up here shortly, probably one or two this week, another episode of uh, Airplanes from the Closet, and uh, possibly another episode of uh, RC Airplane Basics. So look, uh, look for them, and I hope you enjoy them, and I hope that you're learning something from these, and hopefully we get this thing flying. I really, really want to fly this, but I think the build is going to take a little bit longer than I was thinking. This is probably going to be a three-parter. So, until next time, happy flying. I had to show you guys what a truly massive plane this was. Um, look at the size there. 456 inches long by 296 or 290.6 inches wide. Uh, I just found that kind of funny. It looks like they misplaced a decimal point, but I just had to point that out to you guys.